So at this point, I had another idea. So I know that the CPU or PCH is powering on at this point based on the 3.3 volts that is being provided manually from my benchtop power supply. I also know that I don't need to select 3.3 specifically. We said that the datasheet says this thing can handle between 2.7 and 3.6 volts. So 3.3 was chosen because that's like a common voltage. And so the question was, what if I set it down to the lowest voltage of 2.7? The spy flash chip says it'll work with 2.7 volts, but if the CPU or PCH complex is expecting somewhere order of three volts, 3.3 volts, then we would be able to power the flash chip without powering the CPU. So again, as I said, my Deddy Prog does have a nice granular version of the uh, voltage select, so I can manually adjust that, and I could set it to 2.7, all right? So I set that, I hit OK, you know, so again, you know, if you're using a different one, if you only had the 2.5, you wouldn't be able to do this kind of experiment. But so I set it to 2.7, and then I said, OK, let's make sure that my bench top power supply is turned off, and let's go ahead and capture what happens if I only power it at 2.7. So do that. Do this for detection, and what do I see? Well, unfortunately, it looks like I'm still seeing garbage. So that is weird and worrying and disheartening, and unfortunately, that's just the way it is. So moving it down to 2.7 still does not yield a notification. And then finally, at this point, I had like one last idea, and I said, well, maybe for some reason you know we've we've clearly got the voltage here it does not look like there's a lot going on like something is up with this voltage you know i can unplug the deddy prog plug it back in you know maybe i'll see different results maybe the deddy prog is just sort of misconfigured so it's not getting adequate voltage and consequently we're just seeing all sorts of garbage so then in situations like this i don't necessarily trust my deddy prog so i'm going to go ahead and physically unplug it I'm going to close down the application now the application closed anyways because it saw the thing disconnected. Going to physically connect it again. Going to tell it, yes, this is going to use a SF600+. Plus. It thought the hardware wasn't there, but I just plugged it back in. It's going to try some detection. There's no power connected right now. It's going to fail just like usual. Then I'm going to configure it, make sure it's at 2.7 volts. Then we're going to try that again quick just so I can see. Yeah, so you can see it defaulted back to 3.5. So I'm going to... Set that to 2.7 volts. Hit OK. Going to start the logic analyzer. I go back to Deddy Prog, hit detect. And again, still no voltage here. So, you know, this is that's the problem, obviously. You know, you can't expect to see proper valid data if you don't have voltage going to your chip. So the final thing that I basically decided to do here was I said, well, what if I set my benchtop power supply to 2.7 volts? So that's what I did. I just take this and I move it down to 2.7 volts. Now we've got 2.7 is going to be provided. And I'm going to go ahead and see what happens if I provide that 2.7 volts to the system. Is it going to power the system on and have a bunch of background spy flash traffic? No, it is not. So that now confirms that, okay, I can provide 2.7 volts. It won't start the CPU, and maybe this voltage will make the Deddy Prog happy, and it'll do the proper powering of the chip, which it should have been doing anyways, but it wasn't. So now we just provide the voltage. So let's start the analyzer. Let's start the Deddy Prog detection. It's again still set to 2.7 volts. We hit detect, and we finally get a proper read on the thing. So this is a W25Q128FV, and so it correctly identified it. All right, and so we could see that if we go here now to the 9F that we see coming in. Oops. So we've got 9F coming in here, then we've got the EF coming out. It brings the chip select high. And then it tries again, 9F. And then we have EF60E. Well, you can see that clearly I've got, you know, some glitches going on in there. That was why I was using the glitch filter before. So if I were to just manually read this by eyeball, we can see that this is 0, this is 1, this is 0, 0. So that's the 4 and that's the 0. And again, we've got a glitch here, but this is 0, 
0, 0, 1, and 1, 0, 0, 0. So the data is not quite right there. You know, it was enough for the thing to actually identify it and, you know, properly recognize the chip, but we should probably be using a glitch filter at this point so that it would, uh, you know, identify it more correctly. But I guess the, the point here is probably the logic analyzer was seeing, you know, the slightly incorrect version, whereas the Dediprog was actually able to see the correct version on the line without the glitches. So what we expect for this particular chip when it has a 9F input is we expect to see 4018 if it's running in single spy mode and 6018 if it's running in quad spy mode. And so again, if we go look at the data, you know, it kind of looks like uh, sixth there, but because of the glitches, you know, this would actually be zero, one, zero, zero, and so that's 40, and then this should be 18. So zero, 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 and then one, and then one, zero, 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 and so that's 18. All right, so the thing was able to successfully identify it, and you know, again, just to confirm for our own sake that we actually can fully read everything when the external power is applied, then indeed we see the read progress succeeding, and so we've got this eight megabyte chip and it is successfully reading it. At the beginning, we should see something like the Intel magic spy flash descriptor signature of 5A, A5, F00F, and the 16 bytes of Fs at the very beginning. So there we go. I've showed you a little bit about, you know, how you can use the logic analyzer to see what's going wrong with attempts to read a spy flash chip, uh, what valid attempts to read look like, you know, what you should see in terms of the uh, JDEC identification command, the 9F command, and then, you know, how your data sheet will tell you what the expected values that you should see back are. You know, EF is specifically for WinBond. Again, this is a WinBond data sheet. If you're using a system with a completely different chip manufacturer, you'll have a different manufacturer ID and different memory types and capacities.